Madame Kuneva, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, when I was asked to give this talk here and to come to this occasion, I thought of Paul Valéry, the French poet and philosopher. He remarked that his generation was faced with challenges unknown to previous generations. During the first half of the 20th century, they had had to come to terms with the fact that the future wasn't what it had always used to be. Today we know that the future will certainly not be what it used to be. The consequences of climate change are still unpredictable. The growth of the world's population estimated to top 9 billion by 2050. Today it's at 6.5 billion. The return of China and India to the dominant economic and political position they had occupied before the West's emergence 300 uh, years ago, and each of them with rapidly growing well-to-do middle classes, as was pointed out, consuming more meat, dairy products, and processed food every year, let alone other raw materials. The meat consumption in China has doubled during the past 15 years and is going to double during the next five years, according to the estimates. The sum total of all these changes is going to affect the way mankind has existed on this tiny planet and affect it very profoundly indeed. It has been aptly called a perfect storm or tsunami of factors that will come together to push the price of food up. The need to feed millions of more mouths puts greater pressure than ever before on all vital resources, land, water, oil and gas, as well as grain and cereals. To a degree, these are problems of success. But in a globalized world, we must accept that we can only tackle them together as members of mankind aware of our common destiny and common responsibility. Only then can we make sure that these trends do not prove fatal. This year, the price of major foodstuffs has peaked at record levels. That of wheat had gone up by 130%, soya by 90%, rice by 75% in the 12 months to March 2008. By then, the food crisis had thrown at least an additional 75 million people into hunger. Since then, the prices have steadily fallen from the peak, but they are still historically at record levels. According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO's price, food price index, it stood at 135 in January of seven. This year, it had reached 215, and it's about 200 now. In our past futures, the share of household expenditure spent on food had been decreasing year by year in industrialized countries. Now that trend may, will be, may be permanently reversed. Of course, the recent fall in world wood prices is partly due to the halving of the price of oil. But according to the FAO, the main factor is that harvests are expected to be up this year by on the average 5%, with cereal harvests predicted to hit record levels at 2.2 billion tons. However, the main beneficiaries are the rich farmers in the United States, Brazil, Canada, Australia, and Argentina, who will get record prices for their harvests. Yet, at least 36 countries are still in need of external assistance, emerging emergency assistance because of crop failures, local high prices, or of armed conflicts. Therefore, the Food Summit Conference in Rome in June this year, the world leaders said at that summit that global food production must be doubled by 2030. That is the size of the problem on global scale. Yet, 
the conference agreed to pledge only an extra $1.2 billion in food aid to help the 75 million people in 60 countries which were suffering from the crisis. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said that at least 20 billion, 20 times as much, a year would be needed to alleviate the crisis. Well, did I? Oh, the morning theme, yes. In this morning session, we'll deal with the global and European aspects of the food crisis. Mrs. Megleva Kuneva, the EU Commissioner for Consumer Affairs, will open the debate by telling us of the Union Union's policy and response to the global food crisis. Mr. David Sawaya will tackle the thorny question of how the global food business should be reformed. And Mr. Tom von Weimar will also discuss the way of adapting to change. After our foreign speakers, the floor will be taken by two Finns before we conclude the first half of the day's proceedings by opening the floor to you, ladies and gentlemen, and to your questions. Um, of course, provided the speakers have kept to the time allotted to each of them. Um, and then in the afternoon, the afternoon here, did we go to the afternoon? No, yet. Oh, dear. Well, Ilda, here we are. Um, in the afternoon, we change the language to Finnish, and uh, we have some Finnish speakers here, and we are going to talk about the consumers and their response here in Finland to the food crisis and the trends I have more or less tried to tell you about on a macro-political and global scale. Now I have the pleasure to ask Mrs. Magdalena Kuneva to take the floor. She was appointed EU Commissioner for Consumer Affairs in January 2007 when Bulgaria acceded to the membership of the European Union. She had acted as the chief negotiator during the accession talks of her country. So may I ask Bulgaria's Mrs. Europe to take the floor. <laughs> 